Okay guys, so say you were given the following entries. Now, you're given a cell which has names and income, but it's in the same cell and you want it in a separate cell so you could operate on the income like find the maximum, minimum, or average. Now, in this case, we got a little lucky because between the name and between the number is a dollar sign and that's common for all the entries in the column. So all we have to do is click on the column, go to data, and then go to text to columns. And then we click next, and then in the delimiters tab, we make sure that other is clicked, and then in the box, we just type in the dollar sign. As you can see in the data preview, that the names and numbers are now separated. So we click finish. Now to understand how the text to column tool works in Excel, we're actually going to mimic the text to column function using our own function. So what we're going to do is use the write function. What the write function does is returns a certain number of characters from the right of whatever cell you select. So we're going to select cell A1 and then for number of characters since we want to copy and paste this function down and not have to change the number of characters, we're obviously not going to count the number of characters. What we're going to do is use the length function, and what this does is give us the total amount of characters of a certain cell. And then from that, we have to find the placement of the dollar sign and subtract it from the length. So to do that, we use the find function. and then close all the brackets and as you can see we have the number now we could do the same for the name in this case we're going to use the left function because the name is found on the left side of the cell so left open brackets open brackets the name oops a one and then for number of characters all we need to do is find the dollar sign and subtract one and close all the brackets oops I forgot to specify the cell Now we should just be able to copy and paste it all down. And as you can see, we now have column C with all the names and column B with all the numbers. What if we weren't so lucky? What if we had something like this? A number followed by a name and each entry was unique. Now in order to get around this, I've created a function called findNum. The only parameter in this case that you have to input is the cell you want to operate on. So type in find num, open bracket, the cell you want to operate on, and then click enter. Now I'm going to drag and drop this down. Now as you can see, the placement of the number and the word doesn't matter. and I've also created another function called find car. So C H A R car. And as you can see, it works as well. And the placement of the name with respect to the number does not matter. Now, the reason the placement of the name or number doesn't matter is because what the function does is it looks at either end for a number but as you can see in this example we have a problem because the number is in between two strings of text so what the find num function allows you to do is to ignore a certain string of text in order to do this we do the same we select this cell that we want to operate on then what we do 
is in quotations, we put the string of text that we want to get rid of. We also have to mention whether the string of text is at the beginning or at the end of the cell. Now, if it's at the end, you type in 0, as in this case. And if it was at the beginning, you would have typed in 1. Now, we drag and drop this down for all the examples with USD. Now, in this example, we actually want to get rid of the dollar sign. Because, remember, it looks for a number at both ends. And once it does, it takes it takes all the characters that are integers and then stops once it gets to a character that's not a number. So we want to type in find num, select the cell, and then in quotations put in a dollar sign. And then in this case it would be 1 because it's found at the beginning. And we could copy and paste that down. Now, unfortunately, the find char function does not have an ignore parameter. But as you could see, between the name and the dollar amount, there is a dollar sign for these examples. And between the name and the dollar amount, there's always a D from the USD. So in this case, you would find D, and you would have to make sure that it's capitalized because the find function is case sensitive. And for names like David, you don't have to worry because it always finds the first D from the right. Thanks for watching. If you want to use any of the functions that I showed on this video, a download link should be in the description. Please like and subscribe. Also, if you want me to make any more videos on any problems you have with Excel or you want me to make a certain function that might make your uh, use of Excel easier, then just leave a comment.